The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge are a modern young couple and they represent the future of the British monarchy. On their tour of the South Seas to mark the Queen's Diamond Jubilee, the further they go, the more popular they seem to be. This is the hottest couple in the world now. This is the Brad and Angelina of royals. This is the, the, the couple everybody wants to call. But halfway through the trip, a French magazine publishes photographs of Kate topless on holiday in France. Her most private moments suddenly made very public. But by the end of the tour, they put aside their feelings of sadness and anger and just get on with the job, flying the flag for Britain in some of the most exotic places on Earth. First stop on William and Kate South Sea's tour will be Singapore. The former British colony has transformed itself into one of the Asian tigers, a bustling, thrusting super city. But Singapore is still a member of the Commonwealth, and the many colonial buildings reaffirm its links to the UK. But while many Singaporeans view this history as a shared heritage, what real connection is there between Singapore and Britain and the British monarchy. <laughs> At a private party of both Singaporeans and expats to celebrate William and Kate's visit, there's a keen sense of anticipation. It is uh, good, it's in a sense, for branding of Singapore. It's like we may be small, but at least we are in a world standing like, OK, the royal family visited us, and that's something that is, we should be proud of. The wedding was fabulous, and in Singapore, weddings are equal to fertility. Yeah. The bigger your wedding is, the more successful you are. Uh, the royal wedding was pretty big. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so in that sense, yeah. I'm really proud. I, I think are Catherine, you? Yeah, I think Catherine's going to make a wonderful queen. She just comes across as a compassionate, kind person, and I think she's doing the job very well. So she's good for Britain? They are good for Britain? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. They're, they're our future. William and Kate arrive in Singapore to face a gruelling schedule. Four countries spread over thousands of miles of ocean, all in nine days. They are not only representing the Queen, but under constant scrutiny themselves. But the first event of the tour is a more poignant ceremony to see an orchid named after William's mother, Princess Diana, whose house William is not to know that the press intrusion that dogged his mother is about to start all over again for him and Kate. The media pack are all gathered here at the Botanic Gardens for the couple's first engagement. The royal couple are here for an orchid naming ceremony. The flower was originally named after Princess Diana, but she died two weeks before she was due in Singapore to be there at the ceremony. For the occasion, Kate wears a dress created by British designer Jenny Packham. Appropriately enough, it's got an orchid motif. The graceful white orchid, named after William's late mother, is a private moment for the royal couple, and the crowds have been kept away. They also see an orchid bred specially for them. Everybody is waiting up here in the heat for William and Kate to come back. They came up here about 20 minutes ago. They're in the orchid naming ceremony, and they're due to come back this way. And the police are getting a, a little bit agitated, trying to keep us all back from the road. Who are you with? to see the princess. the princess they come to singapore they're ambassadors of the royal family and of the uk in singapore so it's a very special occasion hello what's your name prince william you're prince william <laughs> of course <laughs> and after waiting patiently to see the duke and duchess their glimpse of the young couple is all too brief did you wave your flag yeah. she was on the other side oh i'm on the way up you didn't see her no, were you not upset because you didn't Prince get William. to see them? Did you not get to see them? No. The Queen first came to Singapore in 1972, and although her tours were more formal then, she's always been keen to meet people wherever she goes. Back in 1972, this was a brand new housing development, and the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh came here to visit some of the residents. Well, now, 40 years later, here to meet one of them. 
Thomas Pung was chosen to meet the Queen during that 1972 tour. Hello. Yes, Ken. Mr. Mary, Pung? I'm, I'm Thomas. You're welcome. I'm pleased to meet you. Thank you welcome very much me. indeed. Yeah, nice yes, to meet yeah, you. Yeah, that same. Thank you very much. Hello. This is my daughter, Genevieve. Hello, Hello I'm Mary. Nice this is my you. wife, Mary. Oh, you're Mary as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so these are the photos of 1972. Correct, correct. I see. This, they, they were on the balcony waving to the crowd, you see? Is this outside your flat? Correct, yeah, right, correct, that's correct, yeah. This is you? Y yes, this is me, this is me. Mr Pong, were you nervous before yes, you met yes. the Queen? Yes, 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 yes. You can never get this opportunity. And they said to you, don't offer the... The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge are a modern young couple and they represent the future of the British monarchy. On their tour of the South Seas to mark the Queen's Diamond Jubilee, the further they go, the more popular they seem to be. This is the hottest couple in the world now. This is the Brad and Angelina of Royals. This is the, the, the couple everybody wants to call. But halfway through the trip, a French magazine publishes photographs of Kate topless on holiday in France. Her most private moments suddenly made very public. But by the end of the tour, they put aside their feelings of sadness and anger and just get on with the job, flying the flag for Britain in some of the most exotic places on Earth. first stop on William and Kate's South Seas tour will be Singapore. The former British colony has transformed itself into one of the Asian tigers, a bustling, thrusting super city. But Singapore is still a member of the Commonwealth, and the many colonial buildings reaffirm its links to the UK. But while many Singaporeans view this history as a shared heritage, what real connection is there between Singapore and Britain and the British monarchy. <laughs> At a private party of both Singaporeans and expats to celebrate William and Kate's visit, there's a keen sense of anticipation. It is uh, good, it's in a sense, for branding of Singapore. It's like we may be small, but at least we are in a world standing like, OK, the royal family visited us, and that's something that is, we should be proud of. The wedding was fabulous, and in Singapore, weddings are equal to fertility. Yeah. The bigger your wedding is, the more successful you are. Ah, but the royal wedding was pretty big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so in that sense, yeah. I'm really proud. I, I think are Catherine, you? Yeah, I think Catherine's going to make a wonderful queen. She just comes across as a compassionate, kind person, and I think she's doing the job very well. So she's good for Britain? They are good for Britain? Yeah, uh, oh yeah, they're, they're our future. William and Kate arrive in Singapore to face a gruelling schedule. Four countries spread over thousands of miles of ocean, all in nine days. They are not only representing the Queen, but under constant scrutiny themselves. But the first event of the tour is a more poignant ceremony to see an orchid named after William's mother, Princess Diana, whose hand William is not to know that the press intrusion that dogged his mother is about to start all over again for him and Kate. The media pack are all gathered here at the Botanic Gardens for the couple's first engagement. The royal couple are here for an orchid naming ceremony. The flower was originally named after Princess Diana, but she died two weeks before she was due in Singapore to be there at the ceremony. For the occasion, Kate wears a dress created by British designer Jenny Packham. Appropriately enough, it's got an orchid motif. A graceful white orchid named after William's late mother is a private moment for the royal couple and the crowds have been kept away. They also see an orchid bred specially for them. Everybody is waiting out here in the heat for William and Kate to come back. They came up here about 20 minutes ago. They're in the orchid naming ceremony and they're due to come back this way and the police are getting a, a, a little bit agitated trying to keep us all back from the road. Who are you waiting to see? The princess. The princess. They come to Singapore. They're ambassadors of the royal family and of the UK in Singapore. So it's a very special occasion. Hello. What's your name? 
Prince William. You're Prince William, <laughs> of course. And after waiting patiently to see the Duke and Duchess, their glimpse of the young couple is all too brief. Did you wave your flag? Yeah. She was on the other side. Oh, I'm on the way up. You didn't see her? No, not through the window. Were you, Were you not upset because you didn't Prince get William? to see them? Did you not get to see them? The Queen first came to Singapore in 1972, and although her tours were more formal then, she's always been keen to meet people wherever she goes. Back in 1972, this was a brand new housing development, and the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh came here to visit some of the residents. Well, now, 40 years later, I'm here to meet one of them. Thomas Pung was chosen to meet the Queen during that 1972 tour. Hello. Yes, Mr. Mary, Pung. I'm, I'm Thomas. You're welcome. I'm pleased to meet you. Thank you welcome very much in indeed. Yeah. Nice come, to yes, meet yeah, you. Yeah, that's the same. Thank you very much. Hello. This is my daughter, Genevieve. Hello, Hello. I'm Mary. This nice is to meet my you. wife, Mary. Oh, you're Mary as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So these are the photos of 1972. Correct, correct. I see. This, they, they were on the balcony waving to the crowd, you see? Is this outside your flat? Yeah, right, correct, that's correct, yeah. This is you? Y yes, this is me, this is me. Mr Pong, were you nervous before yes, you met yes. the Queen? Yes, 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 yes. You can never get this opportunity. And they said to you, don't offer the Queen anything, is that right? Yes, yes. But you did give her a drink? She asked for it, so that's why we give it to her. That's how Mr. Pung has ended up with his very own royal souvenir. So which one is it? Is this, this one here? This, so when... this first one is Her Majesty, you see. 1972, 18 of February. She came back in 2006. She came back to see you again? Correct, correct. That's I correct. think she asked to see you, Mr. Pung. What do you think? I hope so. That was 2006? Yes. Before she could drink, I told her, I said, Your Majesty, if you the first sip from the glass, you, re you know, you bring back your memory 34 years ago, which came to us. The yeah. same glass? Correct, correct. That's why she's smiling. And you met her, of course, didn't you, with your dad? Yes. And you remember that very clearly. Yes. But it's interesting, isn't it, because Singapore is so modern, and the monarchy is so traditional in many ways. Well, um, I would say that England is a bit of the same, you know. The monarchy exists in a quite a modern society as well, and I think, yeah, the two can coexist. And what do you think about William and Kate? I think that many people are very interested to meet them, especially uh, the Duchess. I think she's a role model to many young women, and uh, lot, lots of people are very excited about their visit. I think they really are. Kate, you're great. Come on. That excitement is plain to see at the couple's first walkabout at the Gardens by the Bay in central Singapore. You're looking as well. <laughs> Locals and expats alike are eager for their first chance to get up close to royalty. But no royal tour is just about pleasing the crowds. Next comes some of the real business of the trip, a visit to open a new engine assembly plant, which Rolls-Royce has just completed in Selatar. Good morning. Good morning. Jonathan Asherson is in charge here. This is amazing. This is brand new. This is brand new, yes. It was opened in February by the Prime Minister here, and uh, now we're just starting production. The facility has been built to supply the rapidly growing aerospace industry Far East. The vast majority of the 500 workers here are Singaporeans. Why is this facility in Singapore? Our order book is at about £60 billion, and a large proportion of that, and a growing proportion of that, is from Asia. Our customers have grown here tremendously. It's not about looking less in one place or the other or shifting, it's more about catering for the growth. Today, you've got the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge right. visiting. How significant is it that it is William and Kate? What is the William and Kate brand? What do they bring to the visit? Well, I'm, uh, I'm uh, uh, one of the in Rolls-Royce, so I'm not sure I, I, I know, actually, but, boy, uh, um, they certainly have the world's attention. See, we're here, they're in the building, and they're being briefed. Distinguished guests, important customers and partners, please join me in welcoming the Royal Francis de Salita. There is a tendency among some to think these tours are just uh, froth and bubble. Uh, in fact, they're far from that. The popularity of the royal family firstly engenders goodwill. 
but secondly, draws attention yet again to our country and the business and other opportunities that are available there. Here is cutting edge aerospace technology developed by one of the United Kingdom's great global companies. I know that Rolls-Royce sets as its standards that it should be trusted to deliver excellence. There can be no doubt that Salita will deliver exactly that. Thank you. Three, two, one. This is where the royal brand really works its magic, delivering the sort of publicity money just can't buy. The first Rolls Royce aero engine assembled and tested in Singapore. The huge attention the royal couple are attracting in Singapore brings real benefits. But being such celebrities has its downside too. The publication in France of photos of a topless Kate on holiday with echoes of the press treatment of Princess Diana is soon to disturb the careful choreography of the tour. Stay there. Stay there. William and Kate's tour of the South Seas is providing them with an opportunity to see some of Singapore's cultural variety. The majority of people here are of Chinese origin, but there are also substantial Malay and Tamil minorities. Right, so next on the Royal Schedule is a cultural event and a housing development. Now, this place is called Queenstown, and it was named after Queen Elizabeth in 1952. It is pretty much a Singaporean residential area, and I think it's quite a good indication of, of how interested they are in the royal couple. And the turnout, I think it's pretty good. Tell me, why are you here to see William and Kate today? Because it's yeah. not in Singapore now. Why do you care about the royal family now? Why do we care? Yeah, why oh, do you well, care? He's a very charming prince. He's a very charming prince and so has Kate, so beautiful After lady. After all, we were a yeah. British colony before. Yeah, right. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, gorgeous couple. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gorgeous couple. Yeah. They are more human. You're more human. They're yeah. more human than the other royals, are they? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's what, what I we feel. think. <laughs> yeah. Because he has the image of the mother, Princess Diana, yeah. which everybody well knows about her. Yeah. If all children love Princess Diana too, so I guess they love William as well. How excited are you about this royal yeah, tour? Super excited. We actually skipped school for them ever since they were dating and all that, you know, so it's like nice to see them. Hopefully, Kate's pregnant finally. <laughs> After just half an hour, they're off to another appointment, and it's one that's obviously close to William and Kate's hearts. The Rainbow Centre is a charity for children with special needs. Nearly 1,000 kids attend here with a variety of disabilities. With one staff member for every two children, including teachers, therapists and psychologists, it's an expensive place to run and it needs all the help it can get. William and Kate have chosen several children's charities to support in Britain, so the Rainbow Centre is precisely the sort of place they want to visit during their time in Singapore. Hello. When the excitement has died down, Meet some of the children, parents, and staff at the centre who've had the chance to welcome the Duke and Duchess. It's really a nice experience to have them with us today. I met uh, the Duke. Did you? And he's such he's he's so warm. Yeah, he just you just feel at ease when you are with him. Yeah, and he seems to love the children as well. He went to the students to actually spoke to them. Yes, that was very nice of him. And how did the children respond to him, the students? Um, they were excited. Are you excited? Me and my mom. My mum go and click the photo and see. You clicked a photo of the Duke and Duchess yes. today, did you? This is an occasion when the royal couple's celebrity will be of real benefit to the charity. Now, the crowds here at the Rainbow Centre are certainly not large, but they are extremely enthusiastic. And I think they demonstrate the couple really can attract attention to good causes. I think they are really natural around. Children. I think they really love children. They like them. They know that children have been dreaming about meeting a real life prince and princess. And they have stars in their eyes when they meet William and Kate. And I think they do everything they can to make those dreams true. To Her Majesty the Queen and the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. So far, William and Kate certainly seem at ease with their role and each other. The royal couple's in Singapore is nearly over.
but the final stop is to pay their respects to the thousands of Allied soldiers who perished there during the Second World War. Little do William and Kate know, but it will also provide one of the last moments of calm before the storm about to break thousands of miles away in France. Two hours later, William and Kate land in Malaysia, and they're back in the spotlight. The Queen and the modern royal family have grown up with the Commonwealth. It's immensely valuable to Great Britain. So far, the tour's all been going according to plan, but not for long. It's while the couple are in Malaysia that they will face their biggest test yet. They'll soon learn the news that intimate photographs of the Duchess of Cambridge are to be published in a French magazine. But today, their first day in the capital, Kuala Lumpur, it's business as usual. The magazine has yet to hit the newsstands. KL, as it's known, is a futuristic city famed for the Patronus Twin Towers, one of the world's tallest buildings. KL is a financial powerhouse, and there's work to be done. It's not their job to promote their business, but simply by being there, they draw attention to the opportunities that exist. The first appointment in a very full day is lunch with Malaysia's Prime Minister. Next, a more informal visit, and one very dear to the couple, a hospice. So far, they're half an hour behind schedule. We're OK this cycle, we've got a big fan, but look, over there, they are boiling. But for staff and patients at the hospice, it's all worth the wait. From its simple beginnings with one nurse and two volunteer doctors, the charity has grown to be the largest hospice in Malaysia, with 16,000 patient referrals last year. One of them is Mrs Choi, who has lung cancer. When I was alone at home, I was thinking, oh, cancer. Then, no, you, you come to this centre, you find out that you know, there are people worse off than you. You're, you're not the only one. There are people worse off than you. Look at that. This visit creates, hopefully, a huge amount of awareness. I hope that people will be asking, why are they doing a visit to hospice? What is it? I hope that conversations will start to take place. With their up-close and personal style, the couple are putting their stamp on this tour. Kate's tenderness is reminiscent of Princess Diana, and from the reaction, it's clear that she has connected with the patients and touched the hearts of those she's meeting. She was very kind to very beautiful. 15-year-old Zakwan Anur may have only a short time to live. He's postponed a blood transfusion just so he can meet the Duchess. It's one chance in a lifetime. She's very kind and I, I see that she likes children. Zakwan turned 15 just two days ago. His mother says that meeting the Duchess has given him such a boost. It's as if his looking sign anything and she said he was brave and he was handsome and his face lit up magical moment high position people they are very busy but she spent time I'm very 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 happy I can't believe I met her Kate chooses which charities to support with great care and back in the UK one of those is a children's hospice she specifically asked to visit hospice Malaysia while she's in Kuala Lumpur. It's here that Kate gives only her second speech since becoming Duchess of Cambridge and her first one abroad. This is a very special place and so much is already being achieved. It has been wonderful meeting the patients, families and all the staff here. You have given us the most wonderful work. If she's feeling nervous, Kate certainly doesn't Thank show it. Thank you again for inviting us here and all the very best to this exciting new initiative. Thank you. You know, she's good at her job. I'm, I would never criticise this girl. I mean, she's come into it as, you know, and it's a tough job being a member of the royal family, but, you know, she, the, the best part she's brilliant at, and that is with children and people who are not very well. She just seems to give her whole self to them. This girl is really falling into the job, but, you know, the attention she gets, you know, it's, it's incredible. <laughs> The couple are used to being in the media spotlight, and tonight, as guests of honour of the King of Malaysia, they don't disappoint. 
the royal family have had many, many, many years to get used to it. And here is Catherine, who, you know, two years ago was still, as it were, a commoner, one of us, handling it as if she'd been doing it all her life. Tonight, it's Kate in her Alexander McQueen dress embroidered with Malaysia's national flower, the hibiscus, that makes the front pages. Tomorrow, it's what she's not wearing that will grab the headlines. It's a big day in Kuala Lumpur, and it begins with a visit to a mosque. Two-thirds of all Malaysians are Muslim. For the mosque, Kate, like all women, is modestly dressed. But she and William have recently learned something that could derail the whole tour. <laughs> Unknown to the thousands at the Royal Walkabout in Central Park, back home news is breaking that a French magazine is about to publish photos of Kate topless on holiday in France. <laughs> to see her. For these crowds, being this close to the Duchess is something they'll remember all their lives. This is Kate's job now. She took your flower. You look like you're going to cry. <laughs> I pulled off her and she turned around. I think that it'll bring a really big deal to Malaysia that, you know, it's like the royal people of England actually coming to Malaysia. That's a really big honour to Malaysia, bring really great honour. Love William and Kate, and they're the best couple. Long live William and Kate. I think the royal family will see that down that very slim body, there's a, a rod of steel going down through her spine where she can think, I'm not going to think about it. I'm going to do exactly what I would have done before these photographs were discovered. I am going to behave as uh, the Queen would want me to. And I think that has probably reassured the royal family, whatever, that whatever may be thrown at them, and who knows what will, she'll cope. For William, selling Britain abroad is what he is here to do. Malaysia is an important emerging global market. My grandmother told me that Malaysia would provide us with some wonderful experiences and unforgettable memories. And so indeed it has proved. The Star is Malaysia's largest circulation tabloid. At today's editorial meeting, there's plenty to discuss. Look at the uh, expression. expression, the face. But here it's the tour itself that makes the front page. There is a lot of interest in the royal, especially the British royal family in this country. Um, some aspects, yes, but because it's such an important visit by such popular royals, that's why we put it on the front page. Today we've got emerging the story about the, the topless photos. Mm -hmm. What would be your attitude as a media outlet to those, do you think? We will run the topless stories because it is news, but we will focus on what they've done here. We are very protective of our own royalty here, and there's some cultural, even religious sensitivity. In newsrooms back in London, things couldn't be more different. And for the royal family, the parallels with what happened to Diana are all too clear. There is fury at the palace, statements saying they are genuinely angry at the invasion of privacy. But throughout it all, the Duchess has to remain at all times composed. A jubilee tea party for local celebrities is a welcome distraction. And the only photographers here are here by invitation. She was telling me that this is her first trip so far in the east. I think she hasn't been in this part of the world before. They are such a lovely couple. You set a great example. But you know, I'm always against anyone that invades privacy. And why do you want to embarrass it? Of the photographs, the Duke and Duchess have been spared the excesses of the paparazzi. The fear is that this will encourage more invasions of their privacy. William and Kate can only hope that they can put the incident behind them. They're heading for Sabah in Malaysian Borneo. After the hustle and bustle of two modern cities, and above all, the storm over the photographs, the peace and tranquility of the Borneo rainforest must come as a welcome relief. Economies may be thriving in the Far East, but at a cost. Rainforests in Malaysia's Sabah district are being cut down, threatening an entire ecosystem. 
looking much more relaxed and cheerful than the previous day, William and Kate arrive at Danham Valley, a conservation area covering nearly 200 square miles. The couple both have a long-standing interest in this kind of project, and research here into the impact of deforestation is funded by the Royal Society, of which the Duke is a fellow. Deforestation means that orangutans in Borneo are endangered. The royal couple's visit is crucial in highlighting to a global audience the plight of the valley and rainforests in general. It will raise awareness of the existence of conservation efforts in Sabah and also how important it is to conserve what you have left. The royal couple have a packed schedule in the Solomons, four islands in two days. The welcome in the capital Honiara is unlike anything so far. The Solomon Islands may be remote, but it's a member of the Commonwealth, and Queen Elizabeth is Queen here. Away ...from home, but that doesn't affect the relevance of the British royal family to the people here, and certainly not the warmth of the welcome for William and Kate. Welcoming the people may be, but the media still know where the story lies. Palace officials know they can't stop the publication of these pictures overseas. The only question now is whether or not the floodgates will open. So as the couple are walking into this cathedral, the scrutiny on them is enormous. Exactly what is the nature of their expressions? Exactly how upset or angry do they look? I think what is really, really sad about this is the timing of, in a really great jubilee year, the Queen was so pleased with the younger generation of royals, so happy that they were picking up the mantle. You know, William and Kate are the future. Uh, and this has really, really soured that, I think. Uh, and whatever the rights and wrongs of it, anything that dents the dignity of the royal family in the end is bad for it as an institution. Yet none of this seems to matter to the thousands spilling out of St Barnabas Cathedral. The islands are overwhelmingly Christian, and William and Kate are a personal link to the Queen, the Supreme Governor of the Church of England, a role that one day will be William's. On day two of the Solomon Islands visit, the couple are due to experience some island culture. When Queen Elizabeth came here in 1974, the Solomon Islands had still not gained independence. Queen Elizabeth came here. Yeah, I was a, a student and I actually shook her hand. Yes, we were standing and she came in. Sort of, and I guess I remember. She was standing there. That was 40 years ago. Loyalty to the royal family remains strong here. The media frenzy in Europe seems a long way away. What do you no, think? I think about it's him? unfair. They should just leave them alone and, you know, let, let them do it. So what, what they want to do, it's not nice at all. They're also yeah. ordinary people. They have yeah. to have privacy, and yeah. it's a shame that, you know, those magazines were, you know, yeah. showing those photos. That's the moment. William and Kate may be smiling, but in France, their lawyers are going to court. One enduring link between the islands and the UK was forged by William grandfather. 200 young people here are involved in the Duke of Edinburgh's International Awards Scheme and Prince William gives out gold awards to participants in person. The visit of not only a prince but the president of the Football Association is roundly applauded. And here's one photograph 
he doesn't mind being taken. The Duchess has been meeting a group of Solomon Island women. They present her with an exact replica of the cake given to the Queen in 1974. The island of Morau is a short flight away. The press photographers are there ahead of the royal couple and have already made the connection with the story of the week. <laughs> the body language of the reception party is harder to read. But it's not as hostile as it seems. It's just the traditional welcome for newcomers. It's easy to get caught out by the local version of the national anthem. Given the rolling story of the last few days, the irony of this presentation cannot have been lost on the young couple. Solomon Islands are scattered over a huge area of ocean. William and Kate are visiting just four. The presence here today is indeed very special to us, as we are proud of the legacy, once as a product great of Great Britain, and to have you in person as next line to the throne setting foot on our own soil this afternoon. A traditional war canoe transports William and Kate to the idyllic island of Tavanapupu, where they can spend some time alone. For one night, at last, they'll have the privacy they were denied in France. The South Seas, it seems, are working their magic. He was really furious. We left Kuala Lumpur, and now it's just incredible. He's just, uh, he's just so happy, and uh, and Kate as well. They've just got back to the old partnerships, barking off each other, and enjoying it, and and letting the people see that they're enjoying it. You know, when you think the pain that she been through this week. Never believe this woman is able to sort of put that somewhere in her brain and then get on with representing Great Britain. Brilliant. Back in the capital, local radio is preparing to say goodbye. This fella boat where about to follow some no hem decorated one or what nothing is special about. I'm meeting Good Bart morning. Bassia and his team getting ready to report on the Duke and Duchess's departure to the final stop of the tour. There's no television station on the island, so it's down to the yeah, national radio broadcaster to report this big story of, uh, on their Maryland. mobile phones. Uh, around. So. Now we are the Royal Solomon Islands Police Force, so they are all here, very uh, uh, smart indeed in their beautiful uniform. Uh, here comes the Duchess of Cambridge. And the Prince William and me come out behind all them, uh, ready for me to talk with the big people, blowing up you me. So Bart and his colleague Noddy are now broadcasting live to the Solomon Islands. I just pause for the national anthem. Reporters is also here with us. Uh, with Mary 
Nightingale and I'm from ITV in Great Britain and we're here to follow the tour of the Duke and Duchess as they visit the Solomon Islands. And we started in Singapore, we came to Malaysia and then we arrived in the Solomon Islands and it's wonderful to be here. At this point in time and before they are about to go up low plane to Valachista, stand up and pose for some of our pictures. Look at all the people up there. The turnout here is amazing. William and Kate are on their way to one of the smallest and most remote nations in the world. Fifteen thousand miles from the UK, Tuvalu is the most distant of the Queen's realms. Even a sudden tropical downpour can't delay the enthusiastic preparations for the most important visit of the century. Today is the day the people of this tiny Pacific island have been looking forward to for months. The last royal visit was in 1982. We were like young girls when she came, when 82. <laughs> Everybody's excited about this visit. It's a lifetime opportunity to host the royal family. Paparazzi photographs and legal action seem a world away. Looking relaxed and happy, William and Kate are eager to embrace what Tuvalu has to offer, and it's like nothing they've seen before. We show a sign of respect to the royal family. They only have a short time on this tiny island. And there's a lot to cram in to give them a taste of local life. Be careful of that. It's good to eat, is it? A royal visit is a massive boost for a country like Tuvalu, helping to raise its profile across the world. The importance of the visits is strengthening our ties, historical ties that we already enjoyed over the past years. It brings our people together. However remote these islands are, they're not immune from global environmental threats. Rising sea levels pose a real danger to their survival. Experts warn they could simply disappear beneath the waves. A lot of uh, Tuvaluans are scared, and some of them have uh, moved on and knowing that there is no future for their children or their grandchildren here. Iafata Pianiu is a captain in the Tuvalu Navy. He's known the sea all his life. We can see a lot of changes in the weather. Normally we don't have strong wind. We are experiencing that now. Preserving the islands for the next generation is a priority. But today, all that next generation wants to meet a real-life prince and princess. We will both remember it and the joy and happiness of what has followed for the rest of our lives. It remains to me... It's the final speech of this long tour, and William chooses to speak a few words of the local language. Fakafiti Lasi. Thank you. There's time for a quick game of volleyball. But if you're going to do things the Tuvaluan way, it can only mean one thing.
The couple learn their lawyers have been successful in preventing further publication of the photographs in France. A small victory, but it may not be enough to prevent the ongoing erosion of their privacy. This has undoubtedly been a challenging tour for the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. 25,000 miles in nine days to the furthest reaches of the Commonwealth. And yet, even in this paradise, half a world away from home, it's been impossible for them to forget the sometimes ugly realities of modern media. But despite what the palace describe as their fury and sadness at the invasion of their privacy... They fulfilled everything that people dreamed about when they went there. They joined in, they smiled a lot, they laughed a lot, and they handled themselves with true composure. The Duchess of Cambridge's role is growing within the tours, and I think we will see it grow continually in the future. If the purpose of this tour was to introduce the next generation of the royal family to more parts of the Queen's Commonwealth, it has also served to remind the young couple that their celebrity is not without its pitfalls.
The Duke of Edinburgh came here to visit some of the residents. Well, now, 40 years later, I'm here to meet one of them. Thomas Pung was chosen to meet the Queen during that 1972 tour. Hello. Yes, Mr. Mary, Pung. I'm, I'm Thomas. You're welcome. I'm pleased to meet you. Thank you welcome very much in indeed. Yeah. Nice yes, to meet yeah, you. Yeah, that same. Thank you very much. Hello. This is my daughter, Genevieve. Hello, I'm Mary. This nice is my you. wife, Mary. Oh, you're Mary as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's Mary. So these are the photos of 1972. Correct, correct. I see. This, they, they were on the balcony waving to the crowd, is it? Is this outside your flat? Correct, yeah, right, correct, that's correct, yeah. This is you? Y yes, this is me, this is me. Mr Pung, were you nervous before yes, you met yes. the Queen? Yes, 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 yes. You can never get this opportunity. And they said to you, don't 